take a few minutes and talk a little bit about the genesis of the project and, and kind of where where we're at now and where we're, where we're going to go in the, the near term. Just to give you a little background on who I am, um, my name is Doris Mold, as she said, and I am a dairy farmer in Polk County, Wisconsin. And when I'm not dairy farming, I do a lot of other things as well. So one of the things I work with farmer veterans um, and have been pleased helping uh, with, with that, but I also work a lot on uh, women and agricultural um, issues and I've done a lot of volunteer work in farm stress. But I started off kind of my farm stress journey and I didn't really realize it at the time. When I was doing my master's work, I did my master's work on farms that went through farmer lender mediation in the, 19, in the 1980s when the farmer lender mediation program uh, just started out. and. Uh, I was also a child of a stressed out farmer. I grew up in East Central Minnesota, just three miles away from the Wisconsin border. And there were always challenges and uh, tribulations. You know, so farm stress is obviously not a new thing. It's been going on for a long time, but I think, you know, as a youth and as a child and a youth, you know, your parents try to protect you from that sort of thing and you don't quite understand it. Now looking back as an adult, you realize just some of the things that were going on and how much of a struggle it, it has been for so many farmers and farm families. And so, um, and coupled with that, it's not just the farmers and farm families, is it? It's all the people that work around those farmers and farm families that uh, also have, carry some of that stress with them. Because how could, you, you can't be a human being and not be touched by the people that, that uh, work with you. So, um, as Kim said, I, I got involved in this project. Um, I had been working on a project called Cultivating Resiliency for Women in Agriculture and had learned a lot through that project, and that's an ongoing project, and was invited to come and talk about, well, what could we maybe do? And uh, in March of last year, we kind of, we, we launched things. We started doing research on, well, what's going on in the state of Wisconsin? And uh, I made lots of phone calls, lot, obviously lots of Zoom sessions. It's kind of interesting, Trish said, well, you actually see some, there is a Doris, and she is not just a Zoom person, you know? And, and I think a lot of us are feeling that way, right? Because we felt so disconnected from each other. And, you know, so we're trying to make these connections, say, well, who's doing this and who's doing that? And where can we maybe work together? And, you know, it's an ever-changing sea. We see that there's lots of different things going on in the state. There are changing needs. There's a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, for somebody like me who likes to get things done, it's sometimes a little frustrating because there's, it's almost overwhelming when you look at the needs that are out there. And um, in fact, uh, we've been out at Farm Technology Days for two days and uh, I really appreciate the, the people that have been helping out. I gotta give a shout out to the Project Recovery people back there. Awesome, awesome job today helping us out. Um, and, and Megan, uh, has been helping and Ruth's been helping. And so we've had a really good team out there and we've had some people from Chippewa uh, County Public Health Department. And I think that's one of the important things, right? Is this, this is not farm stress, um, things that are going on in agriculture stress-wise don't belong to one person or one organization. This is a problem that we all need to work on. And stress isn't going to magically just go away if, if you know, milk prices get better. Uh, they don't magically go away because somebody got some COVID payments. There's always going to be stress in agriculture. I mean, look at the weather. But family relationships, multi-generational, you know, disputes, um, the isolation. I spoke with a woman yesterday at um, Farm Technology Days and she said, at first, you know, I said, you know, I asked her about taking her little survey, mini survey and stuff, and then she started to open up to me. And she said, you know, we have a beef farm now. My husband's disabled. He weighs 485 pounds. I can't move him physically myself. I take care of the farm. I now take care of some of my grandkids. Before we had the beef herd, we had a dairy herd. I milked the cows. I raised the kids. My husband did some off-farm work. He went out and socialized. She said, I don't have any friends. There's a lot of farmers out there that are in that position. 
and sadly so. I mean, we know plenty. I mean, I, you know, I'm out and about and doing things, and I know a lot of people, and I don't feel that isolation. But I can tell you, I feel the stress. My husband has a brain tumor, and he suffers from significant depression and anxiety. So I live that farm stress every day. You know, it's kind of like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. You just never know what you're going to get from one day to the next. You can have a really great day and a not so good day. And I can tell you that it took a long time to get that anxiety and depression treated. And it really almost caused the ruin of our farm because it wasn't being treated. And we want people, we want rural Wisconsin, we want farmers, farm families, people that work with agriculturalists um, to have happy and healthy lives, right? So that's what we're all about. And we're looking at how we can collaborate, where there are gaps, where we can do the most good, where we can maybe work on some things and then say, well, um, that's our area, but now we have, we can maybe send you to extension or maybe there's something with that cat, or we work on something together. But you know, we aren't planning on being the be all and end all for all farm and agricultural stress or entrepreneurship issues in the state. But we are looking at what isn't being done and where we can maybe form some coalitions or maybe where we can make things stronger where there is something that has started. And another thing that, um, that we've done. So we, we've kind of started out doing the research and then part of the research has been actually, I spent uh, quite a lot of time this last fall and winter interviewing farmers. And actually a few of you in the room have been interviewed by me, either fortunately or unfortunately. But we learned a lot through those interviews and we, we specifically were working, um, looking at farmers that had gone through transition or transformation in their operations. So transition would be that they are transitioning maybe to another generation, or maybe they're transitioning out of farming. Transformation is maybe they're going to do something different with their farming operation. Maybe they do value added or they're going to change what they raise. And so we talked to farmers that would have gone through some kind of change. You know, the constant here is change. And it was really interesting visiting with people because a good plenty of them said, I wish I could have talked to somebody that has gone through the same thing I have, that I'm going through now. And for especially people that have exited farming, they were saying, I wish there was somebody that could tell me that it's going to be okay, that life continues after farming. And some of them told me they really couldn't, they didn't know how to handle their grief about exiting farming. And some of them were retiring in pretty tough shape and others were retiring in good financial condition, but the, that loss of what they, their identity as a farmer was really challenging. And so, you know, with all of the need that we're seeing out there and we were looking at, okay, so what can we do, right? What, what can we do? And we, we, um, we got together uh, and, and talked and then we decided that Maybe we go after the having somebody to talk to who has same life experiences, that that is a good thing for people. So it's not, uh, and nothing against people that aren't farmers that might have this, uh, you know, who talk to farmers and try to help them, but having farmers or having, in the instance of an agriculturalist, uh, maybe you're an extension educator and you're having some challenges with farm families and you need somebody else that you can talk to that has had similar experiences or maybe you're a farmer and you need those experiences. So um, we recently formed an advisory committee and we have several of our advisory committee members here today that um, is helping us kind of uh, guide our direction here for this first, I think, big project. We've certainly collaborated on some, some other projects um, with, with cultivating resiliency and, and some other programs. And obviously at Farm Technology Days, we're collaborating with a number of different groups to put that booth together. But I just, um, but this is really exciting because we've pulled together an advisory committee and we are looking to add to the advisory committee. And if you don't have the time or the inclination maybe to be on the advisory committee, we're going to have working groups as well that are going to work on specific issues as um, time goes on. 
but we um, like to recognize Linda Hodorf. She is a dairy farmer and she is on our advisory committee. Linda, can you give a wave? I, maybe everyone knows you already here in the room. Um, Megan Shashow, who's with uh, UMASH, the Upper Midwest Agricultural Safety and Health Center, is on our um, advisory committee. And Ruth Kranji is also on the advisory committee and she is heading up our grant writing and she's also going to be doing the evaluation work. And so we have uh, many other people, I have a list and I won't read off all the names, but we have uh, people from um, uh, the Southwestern Wisconsin Community Action Program. We have rural mental health specialists. We have other farmers. We have a member from CoBank. Uh, we have uh, somebody from Cultivating Resiliency, Chippewa County Public Health. We have Annie's Project. Uh, we also have um, a dairy equipment representative who's also a farmer and uh, Farmers Union uh, has come in and we're hoping to add to that um, group and we have some potential people in the room too that might be interested in, in helping to serve. But um, we are really looking at doing some good work, some hard work and what we're you have a little description of uh, what we're about on, on here, but we're looking at not only mental health, but we are looking at entrepreneurship and transition and transformation issues. Because oftentimes we treat them separately, right? We say, okay, we're gonna deal with farm stress, and then we have another group of people that deal with the entrepreneurship stuff. And, I, and my training is I, I'm an agricultural economist and an animal scientist and ag educator. So I, I did a triple major as an undergrad, but my, so anyway, but so I've got all these different areas that I work in, but the thing is, is that it's really struck me. I was on a program last summer and there was an ag economist ahead of me that when we were talking about how to help farms survive and thrive, and she said, well, the farmers need to know their cost of production and then they need to know when to ask for help. But if you're a depressed, anxious farmer, I can tell you from experience that they don't, they aren't going to be able to know their cost of production. They might not even, I, I've known farmers that have stopped keeping their books, won't even look at the numbers because they hurt so bad. I know farmers that go to their milk house and will stand in their milk house and can't even get started milking in the morning because they're so frozen by what's going on in their lives. So how are they going to know their cost of production and they're not going to be asking anybody for help? So it takes people that aren't suffering so much, that understand what they're going through to step up alongside them and help them. And so what we are proposing to do is that we are going to start a peer coaching program and we are going to initially start with women peer coaching. And the reason why we're starting with women and nothing against the male of the species, we love men, I love men. But what we're going to be doing is focusing on women because women are often forgotten when we talk about farm stress and agricultural stress. And we know that women in many operations, and I would hazard to say in the majority of operations are the linchpin of the operation because they help their spouse, or other male family members that are farming. That might be sons, there might be daughters farming, but they take care of the kids. They often, often are involved in elder care or they are relating to both their spouses, um, child, uh, parents, their parents. They're dealing with the kids. And oftentimes, like this woman I gave you the example of, there's no time for her in her own self-care. So we look at if we can help the women, that will help the whole family to help the whole farm. And that will improve, hopefully, everything for everyone. And not only that, but there's been research done of Josie Rodolfi, who I think many of you know, who used to work at the National Farm Center, now she's working at the University of Illinois, she did um, a short project. It was actually at another Farm Technology Days. They surveyed farmers, and the majority of the respondents were men. And the men said they wanted to get their any kind of mental health support and advice from a female family member was one of the key people. So I think we're on to something just based off of 
what we know and the anecdotal evidence we have and some research studies that we've seen that we decided that we we're going to focus on this plus there wasn't there at least as far as we know and somebody's probably going to say no i know of something but we know uh, we're pretty certain that there isn't anything going on in that area right now in the state and we feel that it's really important that we focus attention on women and in another um, example though it's not just because women make a difference uh, to the whole farm family but you know 36 percent of our farmers in wisconsin at least 36 percent are women and i served on the ag statistics advisory committee that came up with the new questions for that 2017 ag census and we know that we caught more women because we started asking the right questions but there are way more women out there that are farming that we haven't caught and they are not being provided services and so we're hoping to change that we're hoping that you can join us in helping to change that and as kim said what we learned through this project then we're hoping that then this can serve as a pilot and it will expand you know to helping maybe children farm family children men of the farm families i think you know will naturally expand out and we'll do some other programming and we're hoping to collaborate with all of you in doing that programming maybe you've got some great thing that we can send people to or that you have an opportunity um, maybe you do really great transition advising and we can and we can match up farm families in that area and we talked about apps. What we're hoping is that we're, we'll learn things that we can devise apps. That was a very appealing thing to many farmers, especially younger farmers, to have an app that they could access. Because a lot of the apps that are dealing with stress and things like that have nothing to do with, with farmers. And they, you know, you go to them and it's like, this doesn't relate to me. And, and if it doesn't relate to you, you're not going to use it. And we're hoping too that this can be a pilot for bigger things. Uh, in Wisconsin and beyond. So we look forward to furthering the conversation and hoping that you can join us in some way, shape or form, and maybe not today or tomorrow, but somewhere down the road when it works out for you and your organization.